Hey, Rebel Rouser. I'm Alan Voivod, and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1737 today. Thank you so much for joining me for it. Thank you for subscribing if you're doing that too. Thank you for ratings and reviews if you're doing that too. And especially thank you if you're one of the fine folks who is currently supporting this show at patreon.com slash SW7X7. And if you're not, hey, the reward tiers were reworked in November of 2018. So check it out and see if there's anything cool that interests you. So today and tomorrow, we are going to have a special guest on this show. Frank Rich is the owner and founder of Star Wars Autograph News, which is a podcast and a website and a community of folks who help each other with the world of autograph collecting. And this could be just autographs on paper. This could be autographs on photos. This could be you know taking photo ops with people like at Celebration Chicago, which is rather a big deal. And so we're going to dive into this whole situation. And today's conversation is going to get to know Frank a little bit, to learn about his history as a Star Wars fan and how he came to start collecting autographs of Star Wars luminaries, and also to talk about how the history of autographing and autograph collecting has changed over the past decade. So that'll be today's show, and then after a brief sponsor break, I will share with you what's going to be coming up on tomorrow's episode, so please stick around for that. But for now, here is the first part of my conversation with Frank Rich of Star Wars Autograph News. Frank Rich, thank you so much for joining me on Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? I'm great, Alan. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. And especially now, considering that we are in crunch time, we're recording this a week before Star Wars Celebration begins, and thank you so much for finding time in your schedule, because I know you've got to be tremendously busy and preparing for it, too. Uh, busy and exciting. It's I can't wait to be in Chicago for this show. It's I'm so excited. Yeah. And we're going to talk a lot about that for sure, but um, I want to back you up to something a lot earlier. I want to back you up to your beginnings as a Star Wars fan to give some context to how you have come to do the work that you do. And so I hope you won't mind telling our listeners a little bit about your experience as a Star Wars fan and how you came to start collecting autographs for Star Wars folks. Sure. Uh, my Love of Star Wars goes back to 1977 when I was five years old and saw Star Wars in the theaters uh, with my parents for the first time. Um, I literally do not remember a time that Star Wars wasn't in my life. You know, which <laughs> older than Star Wars, I guess that's, that says something. But, I, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. this whole time. Um, and it's something that, you know, I, I just truly cherish to have, to you know, that I've been able to, that, that you know, and just consider myself lucky that we've had Star Wars. You know, my entire life I've had Star Wars. Yeah, I, I just start collecting autographs, Star Wars autographs, or really any. I had a couple. I have a Bobby Orr autograph in my office next door, and that was my first autograph mm -hmm. I got in college. Uh, I started collecting Star Wars autographs about 2005. I had um, I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but I saw that Jeremy Bullock and Peter Mayhew. They, they sold their autographs through their websites. Mm -hmm. And so those were the first two that I, I ordered them and they I, uh, they were eight by 10 signed photos. Maybe the Peter, the Dave Prouse one was larger than eight by 10, I believe. And they, they both, excuse me, they both came with a little uh, handwritten note and it was really nice. Um, so those were my first two and, you know, Chewbacca and Boba Fett were pretty nice ways to start. Yeah. And that was that was the beginning. About a year later, I got my first in-person autograph from Billy D. Williams at a, at a show just outside of Boston, and that's when I was just hooked. <laughs> and so, over time, you essentially followed this journey of your own personal fandom, your own experience, and made something much larger of it. So, can you talk about how you went from just collecting for yourself to? starting the venture that you have now started and been at for quite a while? Sure, yeah. I, so those first several years, it was just pretty much that one show, my local show, until uh, 2010, I went to my first celebration, Celebration 5 in Orlando. And, you know, the, the collecting, you know, I don't know how many autographs I added to my collection that year, <laughs> but just a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but the year after that, so my first celebration, 2010, 2011, it's uh, the show that I, I mentioned where I met Billy D. Williams, that first show, um, 
It happens every year, just outside of Boston around November, just the week before Thanksgiving, typically. In 2011, I had gone to the show. I met, I think, Daniel Logan and maybe uh, Ray Park, and I had their autographs in front of me, and I'm just looking at my computer and said, you know, I think I'm, I'm going to make a website. Go <laughs> stop. And it was really, I was, it was driven by, I, you know, before I, I, that year I met Billy D. Williams, that first year, it was, I was, I, when I realized that they had Star Wars actors signing autographs, meeting fans just here, you know, just outside of Boston every year. And I had no idea. Like I, I've loved Star Wars my entire life. And how could I not know if I don't know that there's Star Wars signers down the, you know, down the street from my house, practically, <laughs> then there's people in other parts of the world that they, they don't, they don't know either. You know, so I thought maybe this could be a way to help people just realize, Hey, you, you you have some, you know, you might, you, these shows are coming to your town, to your state, whatever, your region, wherever you are, and you could meet them too. So that's where, that's where it started from. And it wasn't Star Wars autograph news initially. No, I started out as Star Wars autograph collection. Um, it's, and it's funny. So that was the initial name. And soon after I started the website, uh, I commissioned a local, uh, he's out of Connecticut, artist named Kevin Lyle who I knew from local shows. And so I, I need a logo for my website. You know, with Star Wars Autograph Collection again at the time. And I said, well, he, he thought, you know, maybe, you know, a bounty hunter. He needs to have a bounty hunter. And he knows I'm kind of, you know, old school style, you know, a new hope. He's like, you know, Greedo. I was like, no. So while we had, we're talking, I'm going through my head. I said, okay, I need a quote that I can tie to the site. What can I tie to collecting? Within two seconds, yeah, lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got. So the tagline for my site is, your autographs will make a fine addition to my collection. And I went with Grievous. Um, so that's where it started. And, you know, it, that's it started as collection, but it never really, it didn't really match what I was doing. Uh, and I knew I wanted to make a change because it's what I'm doing. It's never been about my collection. Um, and because collecting, you know, that kind of focus is about numbers. How many autographs do you have and who do you have? That's never been my focus. It's about helping other people to f add to their collections and the joy of autograph collecting. Because of Star Wars, I'm a Star Wars fan first, autograph collecting second. <laughs> a lot of the people that um, are in the community, that they feel the same way. So I was at New York Comic Con a couple of years ago, and it hit me. I think I, I saw, I forget what site it was. It might have been might even been Jedi News or one of those sites. I said, you know what, that's what I'm doing. This is, it's not about the collection, it's about news. Mm -hmm. And that's the change to uh, Star Wars Autograph News. And immediately I felt, yes, this is this matches what I'm doing. And I was really happy with it. And it's not just news as well. There's also a very large education component to it, I understand, and in community for it as well. Yeah. Um, we have a, a great group of people uh, that are involved um, in, in our own podcast with Graham Miles and Kathy Simpson and Stu Hopper. And Graham has been a, a major pl uh, player in Star Wars autograph, the history of Star Wars autographs for a very long time. So it's the we all share the same philosophy. We were all new collectors once and thinking about, you know, the people that helped us to maybe even get the first autograph or the people that helped us along the way to get us to the next level of collecting what times that we really wish that we had somebody that would have uh, taken the time to help us. That's what we want to do. So there's a, there's a lot to um, make sure that the new, new collectors get that uh, a good, you know, good hold and can get a good start by knowing things like where are the reputable places to buy autographs? Uh, how do you take care of your investment? Those types of things. And and it always in a safe and uh, it's sometimes you in some, you, you, I'm sure you see this. Sometimes it's people are afraid to ask questions mm -hmm. and that's what the community is about. You have to feel free to, to ask questions and um, that's how you learn. And we, we like people, you know, we've all, if you're collecting for a long time, you, you've bought a fake autograph, right? So we've all learned the hard way. So we want to help mm -hmm. people as much as possible to, Make sure that, you know, they'll make their mistakes. That's how we learn. You know, Yoda taught us that in The Last Jedi. We learned through our mistakes. Um, but we want to help people so that they don't have to make so many. And 
the way that the market itself has evolved, the way the industry, like, I mean, there is actually an autograph industry now at this point. So I imagine, you know, the education component becomes very important around that stuff as well. Can you talk a little bit about how things have changed over the years since you started, you know, collecting autographs for yourself? I would say, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I say, in one respect, there's more opportunities to add to your collections now than probably ever before. Um, actors are doing conventions regularly. And I, I wonder how much a Big Bang Theory, the popularity of that TV show might affect this kind of, uh, this kind of type of thing. Yeah. So that, the good part is you can every, pretty much every Saturday you can go to a different convention and meet some really big actors from your favorite for us for Star Wars, but um, from for media. Uh, with that comes people realizing that there's money to be made here. Mm -hmm. So it comes from the talent, the signers real understanding now uh, the value. Uh, that their autograph is a commodity and demand, you know, demanding that they are compensated accordingly. Where in the past, you know, we talked to the collectors we've been doing a lot a long time, like Graham, who can talk about the days when an autograph might be free or five dollars or even less than that. You know, they is you know they're, they're making money and agents are making as well. You know, the shows. So there's there's that piece. As also you see. Um, people that say, okay, well, I'm going to go to the show and I'm going to do consignments and you can't go, but I'm going to help you get the autographs you need, um, which can be fantastic. There's a lot of great people out there to do consignments. Say, you know, they take orders, they go, they do the best they can to get the autographs. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also some that are not. So it's, it's kind of helping people to know what's uh, the safe avenues and which ones aren't. And with consignment, I could say I did it one time and it was the greatest of learning experiences because it was the biggest mistake of my, of my, <laughs> uh, it was horrible. Everything that could go wrong went wrong and I waited too long to get everybody their stuff back. And after that, I had more respect for the people that can do it well because I, it was not for me. <laughs> and I, Frank, stick with the news. This is, this is not, you know, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I would say now, you know, now the, the more opportunities out there, but also the price has increased. And you see things like when a lot of times our community is, when it's seen in, in media, it's because, you know, 20 people hounding George Lucas and he's saying enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark was talking about, for, you know, forges of people that, you know, get his autograph and then, you know, mark it up on eBay and things like that. That's not our community. That's how we're seen in media because it, it, it gets the attention. But there's so many people that are just, you know, I love Star Wars and, I want to express that through collecting autographs. And those are the, that's the real community. And the people that are in, in person in the street going up to George Lucas and trying to get his autograph, it's, it's often mis misrepresented. It, that autograph is not for them. They're not pretending that it is. They're going to sell that to a, a collector who really wants it. Mm -hmm. uh, so in one respect, yeah, they represent us because they're giving us, that autograph is probably going to a collector uh, that couldn't get it otherwise, but the way they have to do it, it's pretty cutthroat and competitive, and that gets sometimes that gets caught on camera, and people see what it's really like. So, all these all these factors go into, you know, where we are now. I remember a story a couple of years ago um, from a British publication, and the big headline was screaming to something to the effect of that you and McGregor hate Star Wars fans. And when you actually read deeper into the story, what he was complaining about was exactly the kind of situation you're talking about, that there were people who would go to movie premieres and shove kids out of the way to wave things for signing under his nose, who were then just going to turn around and sell them on eBay instead of being actual fans i you know have to use that qualification carefully because there may be some actual fans who are trying to get those autographs but for people you know moving like kids and younger people out of the way who just genuinely had a passion for it and were collecting you know back in the early days before they were actually trying to value it you know that was what he was really complaining about but this one publication tried to make it into something a lot worse than what it actually was it's disappointing when I see that. I, yeah, I mean, it's 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 an easy headline, and it, it's but again, it's we. It's just not representative of the community that I feel part of, and that it, you know, 
were trying to help. But I will say I did I did meet Ewan McGregor in a situation like that a couple of years ago. Ah. Uh, he was doing a play on Broadway, and so they call this you know in person autographing. And uh, often at a play, you can the actors will come out the back door after the performance, and they'll sign some things, and they set up a corral around around it. And uh, a friend of mine helped. He's like, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. And I knew he wasn't going to sign, you know, he, he doesn't sign Star Wars items or he hadn't been signing Star Wars items in person. Mm-hmm. So I my New York Comic Con badge and he signed it. Ah, and nice. I said, you know, thank you. And the reaction I got was like, it was the first time anybody had ever said thank you to this man. Really? And he was like, you're welcome, dude. But <laughs> Through him, like it, he was walking away from me, and he stopped and turned back, and you could tell that, like you're saying from that article, he's that's not what he's used to, and it made me, you know, it was cool, you know, it was a great time you know, for me to, you know, have that moment with Ewan McGregor, but it made me feel a little sad that that's not, you know, to to hear thank you is is it was obviously something he's not used to, which was a little sad for me. Yeah, I, I don't know how under any circumstances you just don't say thank you, regardless. I mean, even if you are going to sell it on eBay for 500 bucks, I, I don't know how you don't. Well, anyway. <laughs> just on that, I think. Yeah. This episode's brought to you by Audible. You can get your free trial at SW7x7.com slash Audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E. I've been checking out the audiobooks for Star Wars on Audible since the reboot of the canon with A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. And everyone I've listened to, I've enjoyed the heck out of. And now they're coming out with an audiobook exclusive, Jedi Lost, that's going to debut on April 30th. So the only way you're going to get that is by getting the audio version. So you might as well get a free trial for Audible and get your hands on it. You can go Go to SW7x7.com slash audible, sign up, and when it comes out, you'll be all set. Welcome back. So tomorrow we're going to dig into Celebration Chicago. Frank and I are going to talk about how the whole thing works, how they get the people that they get, why they don't get the people that they don't get, and why they'll never get certain people in certain situations, at least. Like, for example, we're going to find out exactly why Daisy Ridley and John Boyega and Oscar Isaac are not going to be doing photo ops at Celebration Chicago. Yes, I know they haven't even been announced, but you know they're going to be part of the special guests at the Episode 9 panel, right? But even if that's happening, they're not going to do photo ops, and Frank is going to explain why. So that will all be on tomorrow's episode. For now, though, that's going to do it for an episode here today. So thank you so much for joining me for it again and always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.